Made borrow isn't real. Made borrow can't hurt you. These are the words that the anime community in general are going to be collectively chanting after seeing it not once, but two times, both within the episode, but then with that after the credits gag. And King Baro is such an intimidating character, and to put him in that maid uniform, and to just see the shenanigans that they were imagining, that might be the, the funniest thing I think I've seen this anime season. I don't think that's an exaggeration, I just think that is such a wild image that I never knew I could both love and hate all mixed into one unique combination. But leave it to Blue Lock to prove me and probably most people wrong that King Baro is also made Baro, and what an episode. I mean, Blue Lock's not wasting any time, we're already into the next match, and it's up against a couple of our boys who feel like maybe they were a little left behind and they got something to prove. It's no real surprise that Ryo's uh, still a little shook up over the breakup and wants a little revenge, but I mean, Chigiri and whatnot, I, it's gonna be interesting because honestly, I wasn't expecting it to be so quickly the most intimidating match, given what they've been up against this point, but I think when you have characters who are as fast as Chigiri, or even as skilled as Ryo, right? I mean, this is a team that is connected. They got that harmony down locked, and honestly, their skills work really well together, and we're seeing what I've been fearing, King Baro being a bit of a ball hog, and the formation just absolutely crumbling. This is going to be a very intense match, but one I'm hoping Asagi's team can pull through. Now, I do a full live reaction to today's episode available on my Patreon, so if you want to see that, consider supporting. But yeah, this match, I mean, we got a good taste of it. I wasn't expecting it at all. I thought maybe they would just, like, tease it a little, but they were kicking into the credits, like, at minute 18 of the episode, and the runtime was, like, 24 minutes. So even considering the fact that there's a couple of minutes of the after the credits goofs, it was still, like, we, were, we weren't we were wasting time. This show doesn't waste time in general. And just to see how in oh, just a short few minutes we go from saying, you know what, maybe this could work. I mean, what they were saying, the way they're going to work with Baro, it did make sense and it did seem like there was potential. But exactly what I was fearing, Baro, he just thinks everyone should do what he needs them to do and he'll score the goals. And while that's not necessarily the worst idea ever in certain cases, there's times where he should pass the ball because he can't do it alone there. And because he did, we see that it costs them a goal. I mean, there's a lot of tension, but the thing that was actually surprising about this is that the general chemistry outside of their matches is actually pretty strong. I mean, you get the goofy moments with the maid, you get the goofy pillow fight moments, but in general, Baro seems like a pretty easy to get along with guy. He may be a little hot tempered at times, but he doesn't seem like the biggest asshole. He doesn't seem like the worst guy ever. And honestly, his and Nagi's chemistry, I mean, they kind of feel like siblings that are just trolling the hell out of each other, and I really enjoy that. So it actually let me drop my guard a bit, so when the end of the episode came around, it then kind of gave me that sucker punch of being like, I was doubting this the whole time. And then most of this episode made me say I like their chemistry, maybe it'll work out. Honestly, if you were a betting man as it stands, who should you bet against? Probably Asagi's team. But I still feel like it just can't work narratively. It can, don't get me wrong. But I think the best narrative choice would be for Ryo's team to lose. Not only because it would really be a wake-up call that maybe him being left behind is something that he needs to stop maybe hating on Nagi for and recognizing his own shortcoming sort of a thing, or... He needs to be more of an individual, but most importantly, by just having Asagi's team be dropped down to two players, doing it again right away, not saying they can't lose again, but it just feels like it would be a bit of a too too familiar, too familiar of a formula. You would immediately probably remove Baro or Nagi, actually they, they kind of confirmed that Nagi would be the best pick because he's kind of like the best team player. He meshes with their team better. So if you just had Baro and Asagi, well, hell, they ain't gonna win, and Asagi gets eliminated. Everything points to them ending up winning. The thing is, is even with that being maybe the likely bet, you can't say who they're gonna pick. Each one of them has a different opinion of who they should pick. The other team, they're kind of like a little torn as well. So I'm interested to see, because when you look at characters like Chigiri, the, the speed is just insane. You have Sonic the Hedgehog on your team, and we literally see the pass at the end of the episode that allowed the goal. They were passing to someone that wasn't there because they knew Chigiri would run and do it. But then you have the control. You have all these different skill sets that all can work out well. And I think it's going to come down to whoever is the most relevant player in the team. So I think probably whoever got the most goals or just the team agrees was the most useful player. I feel like that's going to be who picks who comes over to their team. But no matter what, I mean, at the very least, win or lose, we're not going to have to say goodbye to either one of our favorite characters, which there's probably at least one of the characters 
characters out of the six here that are probably your favorite character in the show. And honestly, I like the fact that Asagi doesn't have to worry should he win or lose. He's going to have to say goodbye to a friend. He, yeah, the players might switch over teams, but at the very least, it's not going to be like last match where we have to see Asagi say, I'm sorry, Chigori, I have to pick him because of so-and-so, right? So there is at least a little breathing room, but it does feel to me like the point of this match will be King Baro, Asagi, as well as Nagi finding that groove, finding that momentum, and in doing so, if they can, I mean, I don't think they'll stand a chance, but obviously only time's gonna tell. Like, this episode and the show in general has been absolutely incredible. I'm just so thankful this has been a two-core because... Just imagining if we only got 12 episodes of the Blue Lock greatness before having to wait for more. It just, there's something about the momentum that this show has going on, and I really hope we'll get like a high Q situation where even if it sometimes takes a bit to get the next high Q part, movie, or season, you knew they were always going to keep making more, just because it was a money maker and then the fandom was so big. I am crossing my fingers we'll get a similar situation with Blue Lock. I don't care if they catch up to the manga, I don't care if we gotta wait three or four years at times. This production is just so good. I think the way they blend the 3D, I think the way they mocap things at times, just everything about it. Even when this show visually dips with character model consistency, it doesn't change the fact that the emotion, the music, the VAs, everything about it feels like these players are in like a life or death moment where this is the most important thing in the planet to them and you feel exactly like they do. This show is just seriously unlike any sports series I've seen and really probably is my new favorite sports series, period, honestly. I, I don't think it's an exaggeration. I think the more I watch of it, the stronger I feel. Hell, I was saying that pretty much right at the beginning of this show, but I was willing to say maybe it is just the initial hype but no the hype has just increased for me i love the characters i love what they're doing they can make me laugh so hard with made borrowed there's everything about this show it clicks for me and i love it i'm not exactly sure how long this match will be i mean we got a goal in about four minutes but then again these matches can last up to five goals so we might get a couple of episodes of this, which I wouldn't be complaining about whatsoever, because I think this emotion, this match in general, has a lot of chemistry, a lot of tension, a lot of angst, and really, this match could easily be the best one. And I mean, I, I feel like a broken record, and I'm sure I'm not alone feeling that, where we're like, oh, this was the best match, or this is the best drama pairing right now, but Blue Lock really has a good momentum going, and it's hard to pick a favorite moment, but based on what I'm seeing, the struggles they have to overcome, should they do it, it will be one of the best victories we've seen, if not the best victory, but should they they lose it'll be very interesting to see how most likely Asagi and Baro bounce back up because there's no way you eliminate my boy for good but thoughts and feelings yourself down below leave a like if you enjoyed subscribe if you're new around here ring that bell if you want to get as many notifications to the channel as possible and as I mentioned full live reaction is available on my patreon and while you're there you'll also get yourself a video shout out like a few are getting here so we got Tran Nugan, Trekker, and Vortex Hosh so I appreciate the support everyone please take care and have a good one